Hey everybody, this is Wendy's Parade of Perfume. I'm Wendy, I talk about perfume. You know, fall is coming and I've had like this list in my head and I've been writing a few things down and part of me was like, well, it's only like September 6th, it's a little early, but you know what? The way time goes, it's gonna be like next year by the time I get to doing this. So I just decided, you know what? I have some time, I have the day off, um, let's just do it. You know, time goes so fast. I have a job where I have to work like holidays and things like that. And I feel like I just worked Labor Day weekend last year, like 20 minutes ago. And now this year is already done. So that kind of made me think I need to get to this. So I have about 15-ish perfumes here that I'm going to be talking about. Some of them are like my old friends that I've been wearing in the fall for years. And I love them dearly. And, you know, they're just part of me. The other ones are just like, you know, Perfumes I like to wear in the fall, but maybe I wear them sporadically or maybe they're a little bit newer and that sort of thing. And then the last couple are perfumes that I've either been neglecting and I want to keep, I want to make a, a concerted try to try out or perfumes that I just got and I want to wear this fall. You know, I have so many perfumes that I admit I have bottles that I bought several years ago and I maybe have worn once or twice and I'm like, oh yeah, I really like this. And then it just gets lost in the shovel and it's on to the next thing. I admit it. All right, so I'm going to talk about my old friends. Some of them you guys have probably heard of. Some of them you probably have not. Um, let's just start with this one because I hate this bottle. It's a tester. Look at it. It's headless. Headless tester up in here. So do you guys know the brand Jean-Louis Scherer? They have a very popular green perfume from the 70s called Jean-Louis Scherer. Uh, this is called Immense Pour Femme. There's the bottle. And I don't know, I can't tell. I think this bottle is a little too, little too 80s for me. I love the 80s, but just that boxy, like trying to be modern thing kind of is nails on my chalkboard. Anyway, this perfume is not from the 80s. I believe it's from the aughts. This is a amber perfume. It's a little bit sweet. It has a lot of uh, woods on the dry down. It's full, it has an orchid note, which is kind of like a fantastical note, but it's a very rich, um, what we used to call an oriental floral, but um, it's a very rich amber perfume. And there is an eau de parfum and an eau de toilette. I have the eau de toilette. This has um, a little bit more, the Eau de Parfum I used to have, it's a little bit more like sweeter and a little richer, or this is a little bit more like sandalwood in the base type of thing. But I, another theme of this too is that I do not wear ambers in the summertime. I just will not. So half of these are the ambers that I've just been not wearing in the summertime. So yeah, I think this is really pretty. This is dirt cheap. The last time I checked, this is still dirt cheap. You can get this for like $20, $25. But um, this is Sean... Uh, Sorry. <laughs> Jean-Louis Scherer Immense Pour Femme. So I really like this one for fall. Oh, my old friend. This tag is getting so old. Do you guys remember Anna Goutal? Now they're just called Goutal, but in my head, they're always going to be Anna Goutal. This is Mandragore. And when this came out, I was really excited because they, they said it was going to be like this fantastical mandrake root and it's supposed to be all this sorcery and witches at midnight and stuff like that it's it's pretty good though it's um it has a lot of citruses on the top it has a lot of iris it has a lot of a note called the mandrake root which really just smells kind of peppery um the dry down is kind of sandalwoodish with the iris and um this is uh, it that being said, the way I'm describing it, maybe I'll do a full review on this one day, but I've never smelled anything like this. Mandragore just smells like mandragore. If you ever come across this again, I don't know if they make this anymore. I deliberately got the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Toilette supposedly lasts like 20 minutes. And the Coutal, especially back in the day, had horrible lasting power. It was more about experiencing the scent for the couple hours that it lasted than any sort of like projection or performance or anything like that. So. Anyway, this is like an aromatic, aromatics, mandragore, aromatics, mandragore. I don't know how else to describe it. I've been, this is a perfume I've been wearing for so many years that I, I, I have a hard time even describing what it smells like. I would really have to think about it. So another old friend for fall is a Guerlain. It's Eau de Chalamar. So this is funny because I was thinking about this today. This is not really like a fall scent, but I think when I got this, I got this a good 10, 12 years ago, I got it in the fall. It was my first Shalimar. I did not start with the 
the OG Shalimar. I started with this one. I don't know why at the, it's been so long. I don't remember why I got a bug up my butt to get this perfume, but and it was a good thing I started with this because when I first started wearing this, I was kind of more like new to perfume and I was like, not sure if I liked it, but I never, I didn't give up on it. And now I love it. It's just like Shalimar, but just a little toned down. You have like the bergamot top, you have the rose and the jasmine and the heart, you have vanilla dry down, you have a lot of resins and that sort of thing. This is a very good version of Shalimar, which I, again, don't think they make anymore, but this is an old friend of mine. I think this one is discontinued too. I'm sorry. As I say on my channel a million times, I just deal with what's on my shelf and, uh, and that's what I work with. So this is Miss Dior La Parfum. Okay. Don't let, and this is really turning brownie orange, isn't it? This used to be kind of pinkish, but don't let the bowl fool you. This is very dark. This is a dark amber. I can smell evergreen trees. I can smell patchouli. There's tons of vanilla. It's really rich. It is really strong. It really is. I don't know if it's an actual like pure perfume concentration, but it is really strong. Um, I've had this for years. I only wear one or two sprays at a time because this is like nuclear strength projection. And uh, yeah, perfect amber for fall though. It's a little bit spicy. It's a little bit patchouli. It's a little bit rosy. It just has, it's very, very, very rich and decadent and only can be worn in the, in the, in the cooler weather. Oh, another old friend. This is uh, Serge Luton's Serge Louis. I don't really actually know how to say it, but this is their tobacco one. It's the tobacco one. This smells like hay. It smells like tobacco. It smells like smoke and incense. It smells like woods. It smells like cedar. It's just, oh God, it's like a woody tobacco. That's also sweet and powdery at the same time. Again, not, not really suitable for hot weather, but man, you get a nice cold wind coming through and it just, uh, it almost, and I like the smell of tobacco and I like the smell of smoke. So it also just smells like if someone's smoking a really nice pipe outside in the fall. And how can you have fall without Mitsuko? I just grabbed two. So I admit, I just kind of collect Guerlain and there was a period of time when I realized that the vintage market was going to dwindle quickly and that things were going to be reformulated quickly as well. So I, about seven, eight, ten years ago, was like, I'm buying vintage and I just scrolled eBay and I, I have a lot of vintage girl on, not, not a ton, but um, nowadays, like half of it's fake, fake and vintages. They didn't do that back in the day, but these are the two bottles I'm going to be using. This is a 1980s vintage Mitsuko from Guerlain. Holy moly, the oak moss in this, it is like fairy tale evil princess level of oak moss like a castle at night, like like and growing on an evil castle. I just, that's just how I think about it. Um, Mitsoko, if you've never smelled it, I mean, it's from 1919. It smells like it's from 1919. It has peach, it has oak moss, it has rose, it has jasmine. It has, um, it, it's, it has the darkness. It's a dark perfume. And uh, it smells like fall. It smells like things um, dying. It smells like loss. It smells like uh, woods in the, you know, woods in the forest. It, it, it smells like a lot of things. Um, it's famous. It's still around. Thank God. Um, I, I would never, ever, ever dream of wearing this in the summer, but once it gets cooler, I like to, I like to wear my Mitsuko. I really, really love this perfume. It's very evocative and it's very emotional and I'm glad it's still around. So that's another one of my old friends. I have so many bottles of this. I'm like, Oh, I have a lot to go to this, but yeah, I have so many bottles of Mitsuko. Okay, so maybe these aren't like perfumes I've been wearing for, you know, 10, 12, 14 years, but these are also ones that I really have enjoyed pulling out in the fall. Uh, this is from Parfum de Nicolai. This is Amber Cashmere Intense. Oh, again, again with the ambers. So this one's really fun because it's spicy. It has like black pepper and it has... Um, like cloves and cinnamon. So it's, it, if you like that sort of thing, um, along with having like a pretty big, like orangey top, it smells like kind of like stewed fruits with spices all around them. It has a really nice, um, iris heart and very beautiful dry down, like sandalwood, vetiver woods, ambers, that sort of thing. Uh, not a ISO -E super disappointing modern dry down. The dry down is really nice. I, when I wear this, this is like sitting on the couch with a fleece blanket, drinking a cup of chai, you know, scrolling on Frank Granica or reading a book or whatever, just a nice, 
peaceful, relaxing, warm, enveloping feeling that I get when I wear this. So this is a really good one. Amber Cashmere from Parfums de Nicolai. Of course, I gotta have Chanel. This got really trashed when it first came out. Do you all remember that? It was like, it's sweet, it's a patchouli, it's... It's not Chanel. It's not worthy of Chanel, but um, I like to wear Coco Noir in the fall. This is not ambery, but this is a what we used to, you know, people call it like a fruit chili. But I think it's I think it deserves a little bit more darkness than that. It has um, lots of resins, lots of patchouli, lots of roses, lots of olibanum. It has like a very soft grapefruity bergamot top note. Oh, Chanel just mixes things so well. And I'm glad I have a bottle. I like it. But again, um, I wear a regular um, cocoa in the winter, but this is my this is my cocoa for the fall. So I like to wear this in the fall too. Along the designer line, I don't buy Tom Ford anymore because they are just so expensive. But back in the day, us plebes could get this on the gray market for like sixty or seventy dollars. And this is Tom Ford Velvet Orchid. So what's interesting about this is that my bottle very clearly is a Shebra. It has a citrus top, it has floral heart, and it has oak moss, vetiver, sandalwood, you know, leather, suede. This is like a kitchen sink per type of perfume, but this has a definite earthy dry down. And I looked just out of curiosity the other day because I just pulled this out because it's getting a little cooler and I can wear it. And the ingredients no longer list oak moss. That is such a shame. I don't even know what it would smell like now without that earthy base, because even though Velvet Orchid, it does smell like Black Orchid. It has that chocolatey, truffle-y thing going on, but it has a very high-pitched sweetness on the top, but the flowers on the inside, they're dusty and they're velvety, Velvet Orchid, and they're soft, and there's so much like incense and like honey notes and like alcohol like rum notes like warm like a warm hot rum and the dry down gets like suede and leathery and also earthy with like oak moss and sandalwood and man this is like really modern and really old-fashioned at the same time and it just breaks my heart that they probably reformulated the shit out of it but another one I like to wear I like velvet orchid a lot more than I like black orchid I like black orchid too but this makes my heart just ah. Uh, Snap right in this place. You know what I mean? You know how perfume does that to you when you smell it? You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like Coco Noir and Velvet Orchid are a little bit similar. Maybe that's why I like them both for fall. So this is a perfume from the 80s. It's supposedly like a, like a niche cult classic. This is a perfume called Anne Pliska. Apparently she's some sort of artist, performer, person. I mean, how 80s is this? This is good 80s though. This is like can of Aquanut hairspray up in here. So this is an amber that is chocolatey and has a lot of like orange blossom, but it also has like a little bit of like sourness with geranium and things like that. And then the, the base note is like a powdery vanilla and it's a little bit dark. This smells so good. This smells so good. And despite the way I'm describing it as being kind of sweet, it's actually very sophisticated too. Maybe I should do a review on this too. I really like this. Maybe I should. I haven't picked the scent of the day yet. I think I actually may wear this one today. Anyway, Anne Pliska. Anne Pliska for, for the fall. Okay, speaking of backtracking a little bit, back to Oak Moss. This is Lush Devil's Nightcap. There is so much Oak Moss in this. I can't even believe it's legal. This is like illicit. So this is a very... It sounds like it wouldn't work. And when I first read it, this is a blind buy and I only bought it because of the amount of oak moss in it because I'm an oak moss fiend. I'm like an oak moss huffer. So I was reading all the ingredients and there's like oak moss is like the second ingredient after like aqua perfume oak moss. So it's a both it's an oak moss and orange blossom perfume and I was like, gosh, how's that going to work? But it does. Just trust me. It's oak moss. It is orange blossom on top of the oak moss. And obviously it's going to be earthy. It smells like, it smells like Halloween. It smells like Halloween night. That's just what it smells like. Um, but if you love Oak Moss, trust me, try to sample this. If you have a, a Lush store near your house, this really, really works. And this is so, this is like more Oak Mossy than Aromatics Elixir. I am not kidding. So this is another one I like in the fall. I only got this like a year or two ago. That's why I have a tiny little dent, but I have so much perfume. I'm never going to get through it. All right, all right, all right. This is a little bit like winterish, but this is 
um, Hermes Rouge. And this is this is the old um, vintage version, and this is like the slightly new version. They have a two die for a red bottle that I will not buy because I'm not going to buy it for the bottle. I obviously have plenty of rouge, but this is like a spicy a spicy rose. Some people think that this smells a little bit like Amouage Lyric, just to give you an example. But this has a lot of rose. It has a lot of cinnamon. Um, it has a lot of amber. It has a lot of vanilla. It smells a little bit powdery the the reef the reform is very good um this is just a little bit more plush i think and maybe a hint more spicy where this is like a tiny bit more toned down than the old version but this is still really really good hermes does very 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 faithful reformulations in my opinion but this is another one another kind of spicy amber but there's a lot of rose in here and i like spicy roses and i love roses so um hermes rouge for the fall hermes rouge for the win Okay, so this is a perfume of neglect. I bought this because this was recommended to me by someone on Fragrantica that I correspond with here and there. This is Laura Mercer Amber Passion. I think this company, let me find if I can see if I can find, you can barely see the etching, but Laura Mercer, let me just do that. Laura Mercer Amber Passion. Um, I think this company is more, makeup related and then they just do perfume on the side maybe like if mac were to put out or M is it mac or is it mac i don't wear makeup as you can tell um how you know they'll maybe put out a perfume or something but um at the time that i yeah, see this smells really good the time that i bought this um this was recommended to me and it was like selling on the gray market for like 22 24 so i kind of was just like oh oh gonna get that you know how us addicts are oh gonna get that oh i can't you know it's just it's so freaking bad um, I've only worn this a handful of times. This is a absolutely beautiful amber, 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 amber. Am I repeating myself too much? Oh my God. I'm saying amber like a million times, but this is an amber. It's very rich. It has like a lot of laptimum. It has a lot of vanilla. Um, it has a lot of, again, it's a little bit spicy, but I can't describe it fully because I have not worn this like in at least a year and I've never worn it enough to truly, really, truly get to know it. But it is an absolutely beautiful, rich amber full of labdanum and it's very full. It has great performance. I do remember that. And if it's still on the gray market for 25 bucks and you're up for it, if you're on the fence about this or if you've ever heard about this, I highly recommend snatching it up. Highly recommend it, but I still need to get to know it together again because this is something just got lost in the shovel for me. So I'm going to make a point of it to be wearing it this fall. Then I just got this this summer. This is a Guerlain. I never thought I would really like this color, this like royal blue color, but man, does that work. Uh, this is Patchouli Ardent. And... Don't be scared off if you don't like patchouli because I don't feel like there's a lot of patchouli in this. Oh, the bottle. I just absolutely love the bottle. And it's like the density is out of like a navy blue crayon. But man, I, I'm like staring. I love the bottle, though. It's so pretty. So so really quick. And this is the last one. But this is another one I have to get to know. I got this this summer and I really just opened it now that the the, the temperature has gone down a little bit. Oh, there's a little bee on here. That's cute. I don't know if you guys can see that. Anyway, so this is, you know, it says patchouli, but realistically, this is figs and roses and black pepper and pink pepper and lots and lots and lots of woods. So there's a lot of cedar. There's, I mean, even though it's not listed, I swear to God, this is the first thing I smell is sandalwood. Oh gosh, it's so, it's so, it is so woody. It is extremely dry. So if I talk about like pink pepper, which can be kind of like a soft, rosy, sweet type of thing, um, and figs, the fig is, we'll get to that in a minute, but I'm just trying to collect my thoughts here. Okay. So the character of this perfume is very, very dry. It's very woody. Um, it has cedar. It has sandalwood. It has patchouli. It has rose. It has, excuse me, it does have rose. It has musk and it has like leather. And I feel like it's a little bit oody too. Maybe just the the suggestion of all those woods and there's so much synthetic oud out there. Maybe that's why it smells a little bit oody and a little bit incensey to me as well. Um, but it's very well done in that. I don't really like fig perfumes that much, but this fig is green and it's soft. And I actually have a fig tree growing in my yard, um, well, I used to, and it smells like fig leaves on top. And the rose is very understated. 
it's not jammy but it's smooth and it just sits on on so the rose and the fig just sit on all of those woods and kind of like temper all that a little bit but i enjoy incense even a little bit rough around the edges wood type of perfume if you're looking for a patchouli perfume i don't really think this i think this is less patchouli and more all those other woods or all those woods working together and if you like a fig perfume the fig is there but it's a little bit understated and it's a little bit on the green side and less on the gourmand milky side i do not like those really sweet like figgy i don't like i like the way they smell when you get like dried figs but i don't like the way that fig is presented in perfumery all the time so um, i'm still going to be working on this but those are just kind of like my really quick first impressions and something i'm definitely going to be wearing this fall and I closed it out with a Guerlain. I have three Guerlains on here. I think I have Mitsuko, Eau de Chalamar, and my new one. Looks so pretty. And I got this right before they raised the prices. I mean, I, I got this, I think, from Beauty Encounter for like 125 bucks. But man, I think the MSRP on here is like, how much do they sell them for now? $250, $260? Anyway, I did it. Fall. Here it is. I'm going to start working on my winter list next because my winter list is very different from my fall list just because of the weather. Um, here fall can be pretty warm, but I live somewhere where we get true, true legit winter. So even if it's in the 50s, 60s, 70s, that's not, you know, negative zero and a blizzard. So anyway, what are you excited to wear for for fall? I'm, I'm sick of summer, so I'm, I'm ready for all the darkness. And I realize now that I said amber, 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 oh, this is an amber. Oh, that's an amber and this is an amber, but amber is for fall. It's just what it is. It was made for fall. So anyway, y'all, thanks for listening. And uh, I hope you're having a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye.